Welcome to another episode of Asa. John and JB again, and uh, today we're bringing you our list of top 10 SNES games based on 90s cartoons. Okay, here are the rules. First of all, the show has to have originated in the 90s. Sorry, Ninja Turtles. Also, if we haven't played it, it can't be on the list. Also, we won't be talking about the shows. That'd take forever. Now let's get this 90s nostalgia fuel top 10 underway. Let's go! This is gonna be cool. <laughs> 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 Kicking off our list is Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, they made a game out of this. This game is definitely more fun to play with a friend thanks to how interactive it can be. But you might find it easier to win with one player. This is because Beavis and Butthead share the same life bar. Unfair design or a symbolic display of the unbreakable bond of friendship these characters share. You decide. This game isn't that flashy, but it doesn't have to be. There are a variety of weapons at your disposal, some simple mini games to break things up, and, well, Beavis and Butthead. They do things that they do. In short, this game sounds like Beavis and Butthead, looks like Beavis and Butthead, and plays like, uh huh. Why are there so many enemies everywhere? <laughs> Presentation aside, the game itself is decent. The difficulty is high, but thankfully there are passwords along the way. The controls are sufficient and won't be to blame for your many deaths. Beavis and Butthead is a fairly average gaming experience on the SNES, but if you watched these guys back in the day, then you should grab a friend and enjoy their familiar mischief and 16-bit fart jokes. This side scroller from Konami has a few things that keep it from being truly great, but there's still plenty to love here. Get ready for fantastic music as well as a solid look and feel matching the source material. You can play as Yakko, Wacko, or Dot. There isn't much of a difference between them as far as how they handle. Basically, every button does something different. The short stack and the ability to run were nice ideas that translate into decent design opportunities. I'll tell you what wasn't a smart choice in design, the movement with the D-pad. Until you realize that it isn't free movement up and down, you'll end up dying a lot. Once you notice that you move a set distance, it makes more sense and things become much easier, aside from a few moments. One other bad idea was the way lives work. If you get caught or fall, the character has to be saved. Lose all three characters and you get a game over, forcing you to use any continues you have. So when you use a continue, you're only given a single character, not all three. Saving these characters is a nightmare because you have to climb a tall tower with a bunch of enemies each time it happens. It forces you to play really safe, which wouldn't be so bad if there weren't so many stages revolving around trial and error. Alright, back to the good things. This game has a lot of levels within levels that contain a ton of variety. They've got plenty of special sequences and cool bosses that are all fun to fight. Their difficulty is definitely more forgiving than some of the levels themselves. Animaniacs certainly isn't the best game, which is why it's near the bottom of this list. Even so, there's enough here worth your while. Time for beat 'em up You go through five areas and each are divided in half. First part is cool teens in their street clothes, second is their Power Ranger alter ego. Each of our heroes have slight differences. They also have different animations and attacks, though they're just cosmetic changes for the most part. Becoming a Power Ranger actually provides each character with a unique weapon, additional combo hits, and a bomb that attacks everything on screen. The gameplay mechanics are changed ever so slightly and you feel a little more in control in this form. In other words, this game provides incentive to play every character. Spoiler alert, there's palette swapping. Kimberly and Trini, I see you guys, uh, gals have been uh, hitting the gym. You know? Looking good. The enemies in this game aren't that interesting, mainly just palette swapped putties with different weapons. The bosses, however, are all unique enemies from the show that must be fought differently to be overcome. The mid-level glimpse of each boss adds some welcome foreshadowing. The levels themselves are varied and provide their own obstacles and objects to interact with. The controls are really smooth, so you can whoop on those putties with ease. The music is perfect for a Power Rangers game, sounding just like what you'd have heard on the show. Ah, see? Jason likes it! Still, 
the highlight would have to be the Zord battles at the end of the game. It's relatively cinematic, well animated, and overall enjoyable. The game even gives you codes when you complete it that allow you to play the game with Zord battles against a friend. It's a nice extra touch. Remember this show? Brought to us by Sunsoft Pirates of Dark Water is a classic style two player beat em up. Past fist beware, I can't stress the beat em up part enough. You have your choice of three main characters from this show, each with basic strengths and weaknesses. Everyone plays a little differently, has their own special move that sacrifices some life, and showcases noticeable advantages in battle. Pretty standard fare here. Controls are also pretty straightforward, so those familiar with Final Fight and other games like it will feel at home with Dark Water. With that out of the way, let's talk about the presentation. The art style is consistent throughout the game, the levels are visually varied, and the musical score is impressive. Kinda sounds like some gritty Genesis music for big kids. Though Pirates of Dark Water is not an arcade port, it successfully pulls off the feel and difficulty of one. Ah, the difficulty. Prepare yourself. This game is challenging, but not always is it fair. There are traps galore, many of which won't give you enough warning to react in time. But don't feel bad, because your foes will never be able to figure them out either. While there are plenty of enemy types, it won't take long until you start seeing the same guys getting recycled. Hey, big pirate! It's you again! I see, uh... I see you brought your friends! Big pirate and big pirate! Awesome! These are basically palette swaps with bigger life bars, and this leads me to our biggest gripe about this game. There are too many enemies! The look and feel of the game are great, but the never-ending waves of enemies per screen is simply ridiculous. Overall, Pirates of Dark Water provides a fun and highly challenging two-player experience on the SNES that may not be the most original, but certainly solid in its own right. Yeah, we finally did it! Wait... What? No. Well, if anyone saw our quick attack review of this game, they know what we thought of it. So, I guess we'll keep this short. Biker Mice from Mars is a surprisingly fun racing game by Konami that is oozing with 90s cool. In an age of Mode 7 racers, this one dares to don its leather jacket of rebellious youth and blaze a lesser... uh... blaze? Trail as an isometric racer. This approach, along with the use of vibrant cartoony graphics and tight controls, makes Biker Mice one rad experience to share with your friends, if they're cool enough to handle it. Made by Capcom, this is another solid beat-em-up romp. You've got five characters to choose from at the start of the game. Each of them handles differently and has their own missions for various portions of the game. This keeps the fighting fresh and gives chances for variations in your fighting styles. It's also worth noting that this game has a bit of a combo system. Quarter circles and similar commands work in order to perform directional attacks or special moves, which actually work well in this case. Regarding this game's visual appeal, it totally excels. Characters look great and the levels are detailed and match the feel of the X-Men universe. Capcom definitely makes its presence known through its graphical prowess and exceptional composition. The enemies early on aren't that interesting, but things kick up eventually. Like most games back then, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse had fantastic bosses that were challenging and well animated. The difficulty is also very balanced for the majority of the campaign. Except for... Magneto... Ugh. She has died already! On that note, character choice really matters. Periodically, certain characters have an easier time than others getting through a stage. While you could view that as a problem, it's sort of a testament to how diverse the fighting could be based on who you choose to run missions as. While I fell in love with Gambit's playstyle, you can choose anyone you want. And honestly, that's what makes this game great. Oh jeez, another Capcom game. Seems to be a bit of a theme. Anyway, at the number 4 spot we have Bonkers. It isn't necessarily the most inspired side-scroller, but it's still an expertly crafted game. The visuals and audio are appropriate and often top-notch. 
They aren't amazing, but they do adhere to a level of consistency and exceptional charm. This charm shines through many of the levels as well as during a couple unique fights. While Bonkers is often played at a fairly slow pace, the ability to run does spice things up a bit. You're given the freedom of deciding whether or not you should attempt to rush through some of the stages, but that doing so will add another element of danger. There were only a couple of moments where something didn't feel quite right regarding level design or difficulty, but overall everything is fair and balanced. And I guess that's sort of the driving force behind why this game is good. It's balanced. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. It's really good, but it's not quite great. Konami provides us with yet another fun and complete experience for the SNES. Pop out cartoony graphics, hectic levels, and lively music all come together here to successfully represent the cartoon they're based on. Buster, the game's protagonist, has plenty of expressive animations and great maneuverability. The way you play is based around Buster's dash mechanic, and this is a good thing. You can build up speed to run faster and jump farther, plus you can dive under obstacles and run up walls! Your dash can't be used as an attack for the most part, so instead you'll be flipping into enemies. This can be a little awkward, but once you get used to the timing, it feels substantially smoother. Of all the games in our list, this one may be the most directly aimed at kids, as far as the presentation, dialogue, and simplistic controls go. But don't get me wrong here, baby! This game can get truly challenging, and it never stops being, well, fun. Though Buster doesn't have many moves to bust, new challenges and ways of using your flip and dash are presented in every level. The little mini-games in between levels are enjoyable too, though some are, how you say, more fast-paced than others. Still, they add more variety and reference other Tiny Toons otherwise not present in the game. It is important to note that playing the game in kids mode, the easiest difficulty, will cut the length of the game down significantly. You won't be able to fight all the bosses, see all the cutscenes, or experience some of the game's most fun and challenging moments, unless you play on the higher difficulty settings. You don't have to be familiar with Tiny Toon Adventures to be able to enjoy this one. As a matter of fact, you'll have a blast either way. <laughs> Who would expect a game about Goof Troop to be so good? We're talking about a solid two-player co-op affair with puzzles, a slew of enemies, and tricky bosses. Though you can play alone, the experience only feels complete when a buddy joins you. The story revolves around... Uh, wait, who cares? Something about a pirate ship, Pete's being mean, Goofy's being stupid, so on with the game. The game plays fairly simple. You pick up objects and throw them at enemies. You pick up weapons and tools and use them to solve puzzles and advance in levels. You kick blocks to activate switches or dispose of baddies. Though these mechanics are very basic, the game itself is designed so intelligently around them that they actually improve the overall gameplay substantially. Goof Troop is a healthy level of challenge, with game overs being entirely possible if you get in a sticky situation. Luckily, they don't really cause much trouble aside from having to run through the beginning of the same level. The AI is actually pretty solid and makes working together imperative if you want to get through the game. Speaking of getting through the game, it isn't going to take you very long. This game is insanely short. That's actually the only problem we had with it. Obviously, the length of a game isn't the most important factor involved in ranking them in a list, but I mean, come on. Five levels? Thank God you make up for it by being so silly, Goofy. Who gave Max a shovel anyway? If you want to enjoy a good-looking Capcom creation full of fun, two-player action, then by all means, check out our number two spot on the list. It'll be a Saturday well spent. And now, we'll leave you with some examples of good teamwork. We've definitely saved the best for last. Adventures of Batman and Robin is close to a masterpiece for this nest, and deservedly sits upon the top of this list. So where do I even begin? We'll start with the incredible art style that stays so true to its roots that you might as well be playing the cartoon. The stages play out like an episode of the show, including a title card and a specific setting that leads you to one of Batman's many nemeses. 
Stylistic sequences abound in this one, as you're constantly met with something new and fresh in every single stage. Whether you're following Catwoman through the cityscape, chasing down Two-Face in your Batmobile, or traversing a blimp in order to save Gotham, you'll love every minute of this top-notch experience. At the end of these sequences, you run into the main antagonist of the episode. These play out in exciting and cinematic showdowns that show off what the system was capable of. This includes some impressive and imaginative use of Mode 7. Speaking of the boss fights, they're actually pretty difficult. While they take quite a bit of effort, they're still reasonable. It's pretty old school, because they all got patterns that you can learn and manipulate as long as you're patient and attentive. Time to tackle the issue of this game's difficulty. Of all of our games on the list, this is without a doubt the most well-designed and challenging. It's also a surprisingly lengthy venture. There are three difficulty settings that impact what ending you get. While you can run out of continues, the game does provide you with passwords at the end of each level. Sadly, hard mode doesn't allow for passwords, though. While the game certainly isn't easy, it does supply Batman with a plethora of bat tools at his disposal. You're given standbys such as your batarang for disarming and stunning, as well as many other items with creative uses. These include a flashlight, x-ray goggles, explosives, and your grappling hook, which has some of the most enjoyable and impressive applications of anything you have available. Even though your tools are extremely useful, they still require proper management. You could take everything with you into the next stage, but that would require far more cycling through your inventory. This can be tricky during a hectic situation where you need something immediately. This forces you to play smart and pay attention to what Alfred says during stage intros. Time to discuss the way Batman handles. Holy perfection, Batman! The controls are tight and responsive, allowing for perfect execution and fluid movement. They're basically an expanded version of what you were capable of in the original Batman for the NES. The combat and maneuverability are a blast, which is the best way to describe the time we had with this. The Adventures of Batman and Robin is the whole package, not only as a game based on a 90s cartoon, but as an exceptionally satisfying experience worthy of being called one of the console's best, period. Oh hey, thanks for watching! Hopefully you enjoy the top 10! Make sure to let us know what you thought. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on social media. We need more friends anyway. I mean, that could be cool if you're into it. Watch our other videos too. We got more on the way. Goodbye!